rehearsed. I've been on the vibe, kinda hard to describe. I'm in between, I'm good and it's fine, but I'm tired of the grind. Then I come alive in the night to realize I'm in the middle of the time of my life. I'm never so packed for the stack, never lied on the back. Got a bag from the way that I write it. Queen looking Tyson. Do that I survived, doing 80 to the house. Then I hit it to the sky, James Peters on the top. Making it my Rebecca Azor is in the house You know she got a funny story to tell Talking politics, culture, a real life-ish uh, I live in life in the ATL Benjamin, yeah, that's my man He's always coming up with the master plan Politics, scheming, I'm trying to find the meaning of life And while the feds keeps us in strife I'm your DJ I really don't need no introduction right now But you know what? I stay dropping them jams Y'all know who I am Good hope, dad jokes, culture is politics. What you're hearing right now is the culmination of all of this. I started out with a mic in my hand and I graduated to a plethora of fans. I love bringing joy to the people. It makes me feel great, makes me feel regal. I do what I do for you. 8 p.m. Friday, you know how we do. Let's go. It's time for like it or not. We're back to the zone. Let's start this damn show. Like it or not, y'all. 2023. Let's start this damn show. Let's go. Like it or not, starts now. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to another episode of the. I was getting ready to say the Benjamin Dixon show. I'm so used to saying that, but that's not what we're doing this morning. We're doing a like it or not with Rebecca Azor. She's not here today and DJ exclusive. He is out as well. So you're stuck with just plain old me, Benjamin Dixon, where we are here to tell the truth, whether they like it or not. Good morning to everyone in the chat rooms across all the different platforms where we're streaming, uh, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, Twitch. Good morning to all of our moderators. Thanks so much for what you do. I want to begin the conversation this morning with, with a video of a 12-year-old boy, um, a 12-year-old black kid who was doing what parents ask kids to do, which is to take out the trash. And in the video, you can see that this black kid is being detained by police officers for, quote unquote, fitting the description. How many times have we heard this? How many times have we seen this? The father of the 12 year old is in the video pleading with police officers to uh, not arrest his son, not to traumatize his son as he as he simply does his chores. I, I, I start there this morning because I just need to remind everyone that we have not progressed since George Floyd. Um, in fact, in many aspects in terms of how much funding has gone, additional funding has gone to the police versus um, how many people have been killed by police this year alone. We are going in the opposite direction. Take a look at this video and then let's discuss. A kid bringing out his trash to be dumped and he's getting harassed by the police. He was taking out his trash, yo. His dad's coming out to see why they have put their, his son in handcuffs. Yo, they put him in handcuffs. He was just coming to dump. Yo, that was the wrong shit, yo. But what the kid do, though? Keep 
defensive description. That's the bullshit. It ain't even him. I seen it. I seen it. I'm just watching the edition of his son, Daniel Taylor Garbage, though. That's what he did. You get what I'm saying? And he, that's a trauma, that traumatized my son. You know? That's the wrong shit, though. That's wrong shit, yo. For real. Got the K9 and shit. All these cap for a teenage kid. Yo, the wrong person, yo. My son comes out and took the end of the garbage. And that's what he's going through. This is the bullshit he's going through. That's some bullshit. He right, though. He got a right to speak. And he has on a free choice to fight for them. Wrong description and shit. They done arrested him, brought the canine down here. Now they've arrested the young boy, but then traumatized him. All these cops, put him in a cop car. Now they about to tell lies. They was wrong for that shit, man. They was wrong for that shit. The boy dramatized, boy. That boy fucked up. And that's the key part there. The 12-year-old... The 12-year-old in this video is certainly traumatized, having to deal with police officers after he simply was taking his trash out. You can see the video for yourself. I don't have to recount everything that happened in the video, but I certainly want to let people know that... Um, well, I don't... I, I, I have personally had to move away from covering police violence against Black people um, especially when we see it happening uh, to children or to, as we'll see in this next video, to a father holding his baby at an Applebee's. I've personally had to move away from covering those types of stories because they are traumatizing. I mean, it's traumatizing to us who have to consume it. So imagine how traumatizing it is to that 12 year old and his father. And uh, this is really, to me, it's just reflective of the police state that we live in. We live in a police state, especially when it comes to black lives. Now, here's the irony. The irony is, is we have been telling America for a very long time that this will not stop with the black community. And we have seen time and again, this type of treatment of black people, we've seen it spill over into other racial communities. And we've seen the reality of what police officers are willing to do, not just to black people, but to white people like Daniel Shaver, who was killed by a police officer while he was on his hands and knees. I'll never forget Daniel Shaver, who was on his hands and knees begging, literally begging for his life. So this type of police state that we live in is a reality, but it was first perfected on black people. Take a look at this second clip, which is from an Applebee's. This is a viral clip from this week showing police officers trying to detain a man who was having dinner with his family, holding his baby in his hands. And because like the young 12 year old we just saw, he fit the description. He fit the description. They accosted him. And then ultimately, I, I, I will give this to you before you watch the video. They went into Applebee's looking for a suspect. They said that this black man fit the description. It wasn't him. But they charged him with resisting arrest anyway, although they later on found the suspect that they were actually looking for hiding in the bathroom. Take a look at this ridiculous video. Stop it. Hey, please, look, get the baby. Please get the baby. Here, back up, back up. We're trying, we're trying. Back up, come on, man. Get off of him. Squeeze him off. Give me the fuck. Please stop. Fuck we're not squeezing you. Let me the fuck go, you're too weird. Hey, please stop. Hey, be careful. Your baby head. Your no, baby head. Be careful. Let him go. Let him go. Please stop. Get the fuck off of me. Somebody grab the baby. Get the fuck off of me. Somebody grab the baby. Get the baby. Let him go. Let him go. Put your hand. Put your hand. Put your hand. 
Hey, stop. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Don't fucking touch me, bro. Don't touch me. I'm just trying to record. I can record. We can record. Yeah, but you're obstructing my investigation. I'm just trying to watch. Get out of here. Go over there. No. I'm at my workplace, bro. This bullshit. Back up. This way. I'm recording. Back up. That's right. You can record. You need to let us do our job. Go ahead, bro. I'm not. I'm not doing nothing. I'll just fucking back up. I'm right here, bro. Come down. Moving towards us. It's some bullshit, bro. Stop moving I, I forward. Can, I'm on the line right here. I, listen, thank you. listen, you can record all you want. Fine. You step forward one more time, you're going to jail. Do you understand me? Bro, I'm right here. You see this table? I was standing there. And you keep walking, walking forward. Two seconds ago. Please stop talking to me. I'm trying to see. That's it. Back huh? up. Back up. Any more? Go no. for it. Um, back up. Rolling I'm, I'm, stop, I'm done. Back up. Back up. I did. You just told me I was okay. Keep moving. Sir, you just told me I was okay. Keep moving. Tell me when is in the... So... Here, I, I want to make a comment real quick and reply to something someone said in the chat room, which I appreciate the consideration. Um, DDEX76 said, I don't know how you keep your wits about you covering this SHIT. Um, I didn't. I don't. I do now. It took a lot of, and it. I, I'm saying this not to center me, but to center the trauma that these events cause. And I'm not even talking about the people who live through the trauma, right? That young 12 year old boy who now is going to have a suspicion of all police officers because all he was doing was taking out the trash and then he ended up in handcuffs. That father who was eating dinner with his family and holding his baby, a crying baby in his hands, um, now traumatized for the rest of his life. Every person at that table now traumatized for the rest of their life um, because of that event. And seeing the power of the police forces uh, to just come into any any business, um, any home for that matter, and demonstrate the ability to change your life entirely, even when they're wrong. That's the kicker, right? It's it's bad enough when they do it and you perhaps are guilty of something, right? Um, because there's still due process. And I don't want to make it seem as though the people who do wrong deserve this type of treatment. They don't deserve this type of treatment either. They, they, we all deserve the Dylan Roof style of tri treatment. When even if you've done something as atrocious as massacre an entire church of black people, they take you in custody nicely, quietly, put you in handcuffs, and then take you to Burger King. But we don't get that type of treatment across the board and whereas there has been a time in American history where white people did not have to have this level of fear of the police that black people have, we see it happening more frequently and more absurdly in the white community than we've seen it before. Again, I will always reference Daniel Schaefer because that is the crown jewel of police executions. And so I don't think that I've um, processed um, or, or, or kept my wits about me because I actually had to go through a process of regaining my wits because of the trauma of covering this every single day for the last 10 years. Now imagine the people who have to live through this and then they wanna ask why we have a suspicion or a side eye of the police. We would be foolish if we didn't. It would be foolish for black people who see what can happen to their children to just play. Oh, everything's fine. Yeah. You know, we, we don't, don't say anything bad about the police. Don't defund the police. Don't 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 say F the police. Don't do any of these bad things. Let's let's keep law and order, peace and all this kind of good stuff. Yeah, that's good. But when we have the situation where at the drop of a dime, you can be mistaken for a criminal because of your skin color and because of the assumptions made by the police authorities. And then you have to comply in that moment, whether or not you are, no, specifically when you're in, innocent, having to comply 
as an innocent person with the violence of a police state or else you will be arrested for not allowing them to accost you. That's the absurdity of our time. And that's just one layer of it, right? This is, we have been keeping an eye on police brutality forever, right? I'm thinking about the episode of Sanford and Son where uh, Fred Sanford was telling, was talking to Lamont about the leading causes or rather Lamont was talking to Fred about the leading causes of death amongst black men. And he was talking about heart attacks and heart disease. Uh, and Fred Sanford said, oh, I thought it was the police. So we have known for a very long time the reality of police violence against the black community. So this is nothing new. However, we should see this as a, as a veneer. This is, this is the shellac. This is the final coat of the police state. Everything else we see underneath the, the problems of this country, the, the, the homelessness that is enforced by the police state. They go in and they wreck the homeless camps, right? We see how the police forces are used to protect capital, but not the people. All of those are symptoms of this problem. But when you get to the top of it, when you get to the very visible, everyday, routine, monotonous, just average, ye old encounter with the police, you see this type of event happening. You see black people, oh, you look like the suspect. How? Right? Because I'm black. That's the, that's the fine coat on top of this white supremacist police state that we live in. Now, shifting gears, because again, I, I don't keep my wits well about me when I'm talking about this particular subject. I want to shift gears to a clip that was shared by Fox News. And the irony of this clip is that Everything that the woman in this video is talking about is absolutely true. But when you see that it went viral for Fox News, you may ask yourself the question, why would Fox News share something that is antithetical to everything that they preach on their platform? Let's take a look at the video. I'm so tired of feeling helpless as a parent. Yes, my kids are grown adults. My oldest is 28, my youngest is 25. And I thought by teaching them what I learned, which is, you work hard, you get a good job, you're gonna get the things in life that you need, right? Worked for me, why wouldn't it work for them? Cause it doesn't, because the world has changed, all right? And now I feel like I see them struggling and before my generation comes at me, yes, I understand struggling is a part of life. We all struggled, but there's a difference between struggling and drowning, all right? So we struggled and it was tough, but you know what, we made it. We knew there was a light at the end of the tunnel with our struggle, it seems like, kids today, no matter how much they struggle, they just get further and further down the water into the drowning point, all right? When I was their age, I was making less than $10 an hour, and I could afford to live on my own. Now you have to be making six-figure salary to get a decent, tiny little place to live. So what the f is going on, and how do we help them as parents? I told my son, all you have to do is work hard, go to college, or join the military like I did. Um, he went to college, got his degree, got a full-time job. He moved back in with me right when he graduated from college because he said, hey, mom, as soon as I get a job, which was within two weeks of him getting out of college, um, maybe take me two months and I'll save up enough money for me to move out. Okay, cool. It's been 10 months. He has saved almost every dime and still can't afford to live. Why are one-bedroom studio apartments almost $2,000 a month? Capitalism. Why? Like, I, I just don't get it. So I don't even think that there's even classes anymore. There used to be, uh, you know, upper class, middle class, lower class. It's literally turning into the ultra wealthy and then everybody else is just poor. She gets it. Almost. The only thing I would say that she doesn't get is because this is a conservative who is packaging together the populist message. And there's always a place for populism in the conservative movement. But it's a very terrifying form of populism that conservatives embrace. It's the same type of populism, literally, that Adolf Hitler embraced, which is why he called himself a socialist, a national socialist, for the cover, for the veneer of populism, because it's very easy to capitalize on the anger and the hatred that capitalism fosters in white folks in a very dangerous way. And so when I say she gets it, I fear that she gets it, but on the wrong side of the equation, because the very reason that her son is going through what most Americans are going through are the economic policies that were forwarded by Ronald Reagan 
and support it. And I mean, they believe more. I want you to be, hear me a lot of clear when I tell you these people believe more in their very specific form of capitalism than they do in Jesus Christ. They will turn on Jesus before they turn on capitalism. So when I hear her saying these things and then I see that Fox News share that clip. And if you don't mind, David, uh, juxtap uh, put, do the response shot so people can continue to see her. Um, when I see her say these things or hear her say these things and then I realize that Fox News is the outlet that made this go viral. It makes me. It makes me feel two different ways. One, mm, maybe people are getting it. And then two, mm, nah, man, they're getting it on the wrong side of the equation because we're moving into an era of a very specific form of fascism, conservatism mixed with populism and theocratic fascism. That's where we're going. And so to hear conservatives using this populist rhetoric is not really encouraging to me when I consider you have Ron DeSantis at the top of the conservative movement right now next to Donald Trump, right? When you see you have economic policies that they are all forwarding. I mean, it's not just trickle down economics. It's the entire neoliberal economic paradigm that was created or at least instituted here in the United States by Ronald Reagan and in the UK by Margaret Thatcher. We're living in that neoliberal economic paradigm right now, but we are honestly drowning in a period of where people are trying to figure out how to survive. And some of them are saying, hey, let's go with the people who help create this system and who are exacerbating the ravages, the effects. Like they're literally picking the people who are going to continue giving tax breaks to the richest in the world in this country. They're literally going to vote for policies that are going to devastate our safety net. So of all of the issues, of all of the things that they should be concerned about, that she is rightfully concerned about, it would only make sense that you look directly at the programs, at the policies and the politicians that made it possible. But instead, um, this is now the populist rhetoric that is spreading amongst conservatives, but they're not going to turn away from the economic policies of their party. They're going to lean in into the bigotry and the hatred. The next question, and maybe not from her, and we could take her down because I don't want to uh, imply that she is going to say this, but conservatives are saying this, that we should blame immigrants on our economic situation, that we should blame lazy people on their economic situation, right? That they should blame Joe Biden and Bidenomics. When while Joe Biden and the Bidenomics have not done much for the worker, have not done much for poor people, this has been a problem in this country since at least 1980, at a minimum. In fact, one of my favorite um, professors, uh, friend of the show, Professor Harvey Kay, I, I hate to hear him say this, but I would be less than truthful if I didn't admit that one of my favorite presidents, Jimmy Carter was one of the first people to push us in this direction. So it, it's, it, the reality is, is we have been in this economic shift down to the race to the bottom where we have nothing but the rich at the top and then the rest of us are struggling at the bottom. We have been heading in this direction for the last 40 years. So for anyone, 43 years, so for anyone to try to use this as a moment to say, oh, this is why you shouldn't vote for Joe Biden. No, this is why you if that's the case, this is why you shouldn't vote for any of these people in power, especially not a Republican, especially not Donald Trump, who brought us the biggest tax breaks for the wealthy that we have seen in decades in 2017. Trillions of dollars of wealth given away to the richest in this country. So for people to have this populist rhetoric, but they have laid the guilt at the current administration. No, no, no. All the administrations get credit for this especially the Republican administrations who absolutely exacerbated the problem with their policies. And I do include Democratic administrations who either sat there tacitly, did nothing, or did their part to help make this problem bigger. But to see this type of rhetoric be in, to be included into the rhetoric of the conservative movement, especially when we look at all of the different levers of fascism that they are currently pulling, I think we should be concerned, even if we are hopeful that maybe they're getting it. I think we should be equally as concerned because maybe they're getting it, but they're getting it on the side of fascist populism, not a people centered 
populism, not a liberation centered populism, the type of populism that wants to throw off the chains of the oppressor, throw off the chains of the greedy, of the capitalists, of the oligarchs. But rather, I feel like and I fear that they are. They want to throw off their so-called chains of immigrants, of the safety nets of, you know, the solution for this to some conservatives is going to be to cut Medicare and Medicaid. That's the type of that's the type of madness that we are actually dealing with. Again, hello to everyone in the chat rooms across all the platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, wherever you are. Thank you. Hit the like, share and subscribe button. Shout out to Rebecca Azor. And actually, I want to pause and thank the audience as we get ready to go to this next this next story. I want to pause and thank the audience for looking out for my homegirl, for my sister, from another mister, Rebecca. Thank you all so much for helping her during this um particular moment where she came under attack by the same economic system that this lady in the last video was lamenting um so shout out to the audience for looking out for her and the dj exclusive who couldn't be with us this morning love you brother i want to go over to um prager you in the state of florida ron DeSantis has banned the teaching of ap african-american history at least a couple of tenets he's walked back the full banning of it, but they have banned a certain segment of black uh, history in African American, AP African American history. That's number one. Number two, we covered last week the standards that um, the Florida Department of Education, they are instituting with regard to black history, specifically two standards. One that says that black people um, benefited from the skills they acquired during slavery, they benefited after slavery. And then, um, this is this is the this is just the framework of his war on woke. That's what Ron DeSantis is doing. Here's the other side of that war on so-called woke. The Florida Department of Education has now permitted Prager U, which is headed up by Dennis Prager, a Republican operative millionaire, multimillionaire, who has started a propaganda outlet called Prager U. He has intentionally put the U at the end of Prager to make it seem as though he is a legitimate university when they are not. And you will see evidence by the clips that they put out and the the really fallacious nature of their arguments. Their arguments are extremely weak. Well, the problem is, is it doesn't matter how ridiculously propagandistic Prager U is. When Ron DeSantis in the state of Florida has given permission to the entire state of Florida to teach Prager U content in our classrooms. So I want you to watch this first clip and David, it doesn't matter which one you pull, just play, play the first one you can click on. And I want you to look at this cartoon that they are gonna be sharing in schools that choose in the state of Florida to play this for their students. And I want you to listen to the argument, the framework. Now I feel the arguments are pretty pathetic, but that doesn't change the fact that if you put this in a classroom with middle school students, they will start embracing these teachings which are expressly aimed these videos are expressly aimed at absolving the united states of america from any responsibility or accountability for what they did to black people during shadow slavery let's play the first video date hate that our country had slavery mr washington sometimes do you wish you could have lived somewhere else like a different country that's a great question and i hate slavery too but it's been a reality everywhere in the world. And even now in 1910, it's still happening in other countries. Despite our nation not always living up to our declaration that all men are created equal, I am still so proud and thankful to be an American. Even though you were a slave? Exactly, because I was and <laughs> not anymore. I, um, so there's more, and this is the least of the problematic videos. I have two more. Um, but if you notice the framing is to absolve this country of the responsibility of what it did to enslaved Africans throughout the 400 years of chattel slavery. And in this first clip, you see that he is attempting to not just whitewash, but to minimize the uniqueness of American shadow slavery. Yes, there has been slavery all across the, this globe, all across the history of this planet. But there was only one form of chattel slavery. That was the United States, and I believe the United Kingdom also participated in it. But specifically what the United States did, ownership of human, human beings as property, ownership of human beings as 
cattle is 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 livestock right to be sold and traded to break up families in which the cruelty was absolutely the point the point was to be as barbaric and cruel to black people as possible separating mothers from children fathers from wives for the purposes of breaking their resolve that happened only in the united states chattel slavery to the descendants of enslaved or rather to enslaved africans so take a look at this next clip this next clip i want you to listen to is of these two little white kids who are traveling through time trying to you know i don't know absolve themselves <laughs> get some absolution or something and here they are talking to who's supposed to be frederick douglas i just you know and, and again i said this on my podcast i want to say it again to all of my white listeners please and are non-black i don't care if you if you're non-black don't laugh at this but I want you to listen to this man's voice. This voice is perhaps the most contastic voice they could have possibly gotten to represent um, Frederick Douglass. He sounds more like Herman Cain or Clarence Thomas, if you ask me. Run a clip. Children, our founding fathers knew that slavery was evil and wrong, and they knew that it would do terrible harm to the nation. They wanted it to end but their first priority was getting all 13 colonies to unite as one country. The Southern colonies were dependent on slave labor and they wouldn't have joined a union that had banned it. Are you okay with that? I'm certainly not okay with slavery, but the founding fathers made a compromise to achieve something great, the making of the United States. It was America that began the conversation to end it. But Leo is correct that big problems need to be approached very carefully. Have you kids heard of William Lloyd Garrison? No. Nope. He's an abolitionist like me, and he and I used to be friends, but we aren't any longer. We don't agree how to solve problems. William refuses all compromises, demands immediate change, and if he doesn't get what he wants, he likes to set things on fire. Sounds familiar. Sounds like you know the type. Yeah, we've got that type in our time. So, you're trying to work for change inside of the American system. Precisely, Layla. Our system is wonderful, and the Constitution is a glorious liberty document. We just need to convince enough Americans to be true to it. Um, I'm, it's the voice for me. I mean, it literally sounds like a white guy trying to put on his best sounding black voice uh, possible. <laughs> but I digress. The arguments, right? The, 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 the very subtle propaganda and, and it's not even subtle but it's subtle if you aren't aware of what these people at prager you are trying to do they are honestly trying to take historical figures and say that they would not support what black people are doing today because like those two little white kids said in the clip oh we've got those type in our day what type are those what type of people are you, are you referring to people who protest now are you labeling all of the protests, perhaps from Black Lives Matter, as riots who burn down their cities, right? Is that the entirety and the breadth and scope of what you believe? Yes, that is exactly what they believe about it. That's exactly what they believe about the fight for justice. And they want to rewrite history so that anyone in history that is a, an, an icon, a figure who should be admired, they want to rewrite them and say, well, no, they would not support the current movement for black lives. They would not support the current movement for liberation and civil rights. Um, this next video, um, and actually one point that they did leave out here is the fact that um, Frederick Douglass and Garrison reconciled later in life. And their disagreement was on tactics, but not on substance, right? And, and here's, a, here's the other thing. It is, it is a sad state of affairs that this type of propaganda is not only being permitted in the state of Florida, but in New Hampshire. They're, they are moving to have PragerU put into the classrooms in that state as well. Now, the current move has been tabled. If I'm not mistaken, they have tabled the decision of whether or not they're going to allow PragerU. But that's only because of the backlash that Florida has received, that DeSantis has received after admitting Prager U. But I want to play this last clip. This last clip is perhaps the most insidious, and it features none other than Christopher Columbus. And I want you to listen to the nature of the arguments that he's making here and listen to what Dennis Prager, 
that multi-millionaire propagandist is trying to convince classroom students of. Take a listen. About slavery, you didn't deny that. Deny? No. Slavery is as old as time and has taken place in every corner of the world, even amongst the people I just left. Being taken as a slave is better than being killed, no? I don't see the problem. Well, in our time, we view slavery as being evil and terrible. Ah, magnifico! That's wonderful! I am glad humanity has reached such a time. But you said you're from 500 years in the future? How can you come here to the 15th century and judge me by your standards from the 21st century? For those in the future to look back and do this is, well, estupido. Are you calling me dumb? Certainly not. I can tell you're a very smart young lady, but the idea of throwing away the past because of your present values is... Listen, I love and am thankful for the ancient Greeks, but they did lots of things that here in 1493 I do not agree with. They permitted lifestyles and worshipped gods that, as a Christian, I think is very bad. <laughs> but that doesn't mean I shouldn't respect... As a Christian, Christopher Columbus. Yes, please, yes, please put him on. As a Christian, he didn't approve of the lifestyles that the Greeks embraced and the multiplicity of gods that they served. But also as a Christian, he didn't care about genociding the Native Americans. This is so, this is actually, I mean, there's a lot in this clip, but I want to start there. This is so perfect. This is the most perfect description of white evangelicals today. Right now, today, right? I don't know if Dennis Prager knew what he was doing, but he created the perfect juxtaposition for us to understand the infantile, juvenile, and malicious theology of white evangelicals, which is to say, hey, look, I don't approve of what you're doing in your lifestyle. I don't approve of what you are doing in terms of what God you serve and what you don't serve. Um, but I approve of the barbarity of genocide, the barbarity of slavery, the barbarity of all the things they actively do. Will they ever admit that they approve genocide? They would never say that out of their mouth. But will they commit acts of genocide? All throughout American history, all throughout world history, right? Do they, will they say that they actively approve of the military industrial complex and waging wars in order to enrich it further? Of course they'll never say that. Do they actively do it? Yes. What do they publicly condemn? Someone who happens to be gay. What do they publicly condemn? Someone who doesn't believe in Jesus. That's what they condemn. So it shows you just how completely and utterly devoid of substance their entire faith and theology, Christian nationalism actually is. Now, let's get to the specific arguments that were made by this Christopher Columbus argument uh, uh, character. He's saying that it's El Stupido, which, my God, come on. Did you really put that in the video? Uh, El Stupido. <laughs> Side note, if I had millions of dollars to create progressive content, it would be, I don't even need millions of dollars. If I had a couple ten thousands of dollars, it would be <laughs> magnitudes of order better than this thing that Dennis Prager has now created and this thing that is now going to be in our schools. And so here, here uh, Christopher Columbus, you can go back to the shot, uh, is talking about how it is ignorant to judge the past based on our present values. I'm sorry, but at no point in human history has it been okay or should it have ever been seen to be okay to enslave people. That is a consistent judgment, moral judgment throughout world history, it was never okay to enslave people and the people who did it are wrong. It was never okay to act in acts of genocide and the people who did it are wrong and should be condemned. The past can be condemned because you don't want it to repeat in the future. But according to Dennis Prager and his multi-million dollar propaganda outlet to think like that is, uh, uh, how do you say, El Stupido. It was one of the dumbest things I've ever seen in my life, but yet it's being taught to, in the classrooms, um, being taught in the classrooms of the state of Florida versus AP Black uh, uh, or African-American history. Right? This, is, this is what we're really facing. So anyway, um, 
I want to move on to uh, uh, a little bit more content this morning as we get ready to get out of here. I, I've got to hit the road. Thank you all so much for supporting the show and, and doing what you do. But this is just another day. This is just an average day in this country. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about what's happening in Hawaii. I don't know if we have any uh, clips of that. Um, what's also happening around the world is a very grim reality when it comes to climate change and climate disaster. Um, the last report that I saw had some 64 people who had been confirmed dead on the island of Maui, uh, Hawaii, after the raging fires burned and just cut through the entire um, city. And if you look at the images, and uh, David, whatever images you have, if you could pull them up, you see the reality of what is coming. Already here, but more is coming. And the reality is that there are some 1,000 people who are still missing. So there's a very strong possibility that the death toll is going to raise to an astronomic number. What compounds this tragedy is the fact that we're actively doing nothing to prevent the next one. In fact, we're continuing down the path to further exacerbate climate disaster. And yet our leaders around the world, from Joe Biden to everyone who showed up to the G20 summit, and yet they left the G20 summit without doing anything, without making any decision about how we can halt and arrest the ravages of climate disaster, of climate emergency. And one thing that I've been sharing with the podcast audience is that we need to really put something in perspective. What we are good at in this country is forgetting the current crisis that we're in. If we're in it long enough, we see the exact same effects with COVID-19, right? We forget that we are in the middle of a pandemic because we've been in the pandemic for so long. And that forgetfulness exacerbates it makes it worse. We have a new surge in the state of Florida, 10,000 new cases of hospitalizations in a single day. Actually, let me rephrase that. 10,000 new cases with multiple hospitalizations, an uptick that we haven't seen in a very long time. That's because we as a people, as a body politic, have decided to compartmentalize the ongoing tragedy, the ongoing trauma of COVID-19, and we've just normalized it. How are we going to do next summer? when it's even hotter than this summer, right? We, we're we barely making it out of this current summer. But when we go into the fall, when we go into the winter, a lot of the conversations of urgency that we see right now, right now we see people who are crying out for, uh, for the declaration of a climate emergency. And I too am calling on President Joe Biden to declare a climate emergency so that we can do whatever is necessary for us to save not only this planet, my God, but to save our children and our grandchildren. But we have no action. We have nothing happening. And I fear that when the fall comes and the colors start to change and the temperature drops a little and people start getting their their pumpkin spice lattes and they start, you know, getting a little shiver and they put the little, you know, they wrap themselves in their scarves. I fear that we as a people are going to forget how hot this summer was. And if we forget right now, if we forget how hot this current summer is. Then we will do nothing in the fall in the winter or in the spring to prepare us or to prevent next summer from being even hotter. Yes, I, I'm being, give me, uh, yes, thank you, sweet pea. All right, um, you you will be fine. Forgive me guys, I, I'm at home with my, my children. This, next summer will be even hotter. And if, if we're not careful, we will find ourselves gradually boiling in the pot of water that is climate change, all while the most powerful people on this planet who know exactly what's going on. They're fully aware of the situation. They're fully aware of the predictions. In fact, I find it the most disheartening and ironic that the tweet that was mocked by Greta Thunberg, by the conservative class all around this country, they, they, joyously mocked a tweet from Greta Thunberg that correctly identified a scientific study that said 
that we only had to 2023 to grab hold of the effects of climate change before it's too late. That was a summary. That was a paraphrase of her tweet. It gave us five years from 2018 to 2023 for us to arrest the ravages of what was coming. And the entire conservative system from elected politicians, I mean, people in Washington, D.C., down to people on, on YouTube and on podcasts, mocked that tweet. And I find it so heartbreaking and ironic in a very sad and twisted way that almost to the day of her tweet, and there it is, I'll read it. A top climate scientist is warning that climate change will wipe out all of humanity unless we stop using fossil fuels over the next five years. She sent that in 2018, July or June 2018. Five years later, conservatives picked it up and mocked it to scorn, laughed and say, ha, 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 we're still here. We didn't die, right? The, of course, demonstrating their lack of reading comprehension, their, their illiteracy, but also representing their, their intentional ignorance. The willingness to look at scientific research that shows that we have been heading in this direction for a very long time and just laugh about it and to mock it. This is worse than the movie Don't Look Up. This is honestly worse because the absurdity is it's not just people, it's not just people trying to cover their eyes. It is an active measure by this political system, by the most powerful people on the planet to get as much wealth out of this world as they can, even if it costs the world, the world. If it even if it costs humanity, our species, we seriously have some of the most barbaric people imaginable in power. And so while they actively mock that tweet, the reality is, is that almost to the day, June 21st, 2023, look at, look at the reporting in the news. June, 20, June 2023, we saw an uptick in the most devastating floods, in the most devastating fires, in the most devastating hailstorms. Right. The increase and in the intensity, the frequency and the intensity of these storms are increasing. So we see a sudden. Let me choose my words carefully. It's not sudden, but we saw a very dra dramatic shift in the climate, in the storms of this particular summer than we've seen any other summer. Top scientists told us this was going to happen. Activists warned us and said, please, when Bruce. Dave, I don't know if you could pull up a picture of Wynne Bruce, the climate activist who self-immolated on the steps of the Supreme Court. He did that to bring attention to the impending disaster, and it barely made a blip in the news cycle. And that was intentional as well, because the most powerful people on this planet have the reins of our media. And I want to be specific because I don't want anyone to think that I'm talking about um, something anti-Semitic or I'm not talking about Jewish people. I'm talking about all executives. So, you know, when you when you say the most powerful people on the planet, you got a lot of folks. Who say, oh, no, 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 no. I'm talking about oil executives, the most powerful people on the planet who they must have security that rivals the Secret Service, because these people are actively a threat, a harm to our lives. So when I say the most powerful people in the world, I'm talking about oil executives who can literally see the world burning around us. And instead of doing anything about it, they send out their scientists that they hired to give falsified data, to create some plausible deniability. So that instead of the 97% consensus amongst scientists, you've got that 3% who are bought and paid for by oil executives. Right? That's what they do. Instead of doing anything to save this planet, they actively hire conservative propagandists who will go over and above to do anything they can to stop us from doing something to prevent further disaster. These oil executives, they are the most powerful people in the world. They are the ones who can literally destroy this planet while the rest of us are just simply trying to make the next check because we got bills to pay. But they sit back with the data that they have known about for over 100 years and they actively engage in activities and propaganda measures to prevent us from doing anything about it. They are the most powerful people in the world. They are the ones who control civilization because when you can get the G20 summit together and you have all of the leaders of the major nations of this world get together over this particular summer, look at the ravages of what's happening in real time. 
the flooding in Pakistan, the flooding in Afghanistan, the fires all across the globe, the fires in Canada, the fires in Maui and Hawaii. You see all of this happening and the most powerful people on the planet don't even discuss it. The most powerful people on the planet are oil executives and they must be the most protected because right now it would be self-defense. That's all I'm gonna say this morning, folks. Um, Patreon.com forward slash like it or not. Tomorrow night, I will be hanging out with Dr. Carl Mack and we're gonna be discussing the, the, the melee in Montgomery. <laughs> we're gonna be discussing what he has termed it. He's called it the Montgomery Sweet Tea Party. <laughs> That's what we're gonna do. So tomorrow night around 6.30, he and I are gonna be jumping on the stream. So make sure you're there. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash like it or not to support this show, Rebecca Azor and uh, DJ Exclusive. Patreon.com forward slash the BPD show if you wanna support the podcast very directly. Thank you all so much. Um, I got to leave now because if I don't, I'm going to say something that's going to get me in trouble because again, the oil executives, they better have, oh, I'm sorry, not better, but they must have the security of the secret service because right now they are a threat to every single person's life on the face of this planet and not even the president of the United States is brave enough to do something about it. So I should get off the air before I say what we could and should and probably might sort of do to protect the planet. I mean, we're just talking about our children and our grandchildren. Like, David, put some, play some music. <laughs> play some music, come out of here. Yeah, that's my man. He's always coming up with the master plan. Politics scheming, I'm trying to find the meaning of life. I want the fans keeps us in strife. I'm your DJ. I really don't need no introduction right now, but you know what? I stay dropping up jams. Y'all know who I am. Good hope, dad jokes, culture is politics. What you're hearing right now was the culmination of all of this. I started out with a mic in my hand and I graduated to a plethora of fans. I love bringing joy to the people. It makes me feel great, makes me feel regal. I do what I do for you. APM Friday, you know how we do. Let's go. It's time for like it or not. Let's start this damn show. Like it or not, y'all. 2023. Let's start this damn show. Let's go.